In 2008, Nina Paley released her first feature film, Sita Sings the Blues. She wanted it to be in the public domain. She also wanted to use music from the 1920s singer Annette Hanshaw. This music should have been in the public domain, but wasn't because of retroactive copyright laws. She paid over $50,000 to keep this film free, and still, German YouTube ripped it off their site. Music content is not available in Germany because GEMA, which stands for Gesellschaft für Musikalische Aufführungs, or German Entitlement Music Authoritarians, has not granted the respective music publishing rights. Really? Well, Gemma, here's the contract I signed with Sony ATV in 2009. I also paid them a significant sum of money for the privilege of giving the film away for free. See where it says licensed territory, the world? It does not say the world except Germany where Gemma can block whatever they want. This was a slap in the face. She had done everything right. And she learned a lot about copyright law in the process. She came away with two realizations. First, that copyright holders were using their power to suppress the individual artist. And second, that it did not benefit her to copyright her work. And they don't have to license it anyway. Like you could offer them millions of dollars and if they don't feel like it, they're under no obligation to license works. Um, if you don't get the permission, then what they do is they legally can censor a movie. And this happens all the time. How much was copyright actually benefiting me? And I took a look at my career, which had mostly been in comics up to that point, and I realized, actually, I wasn't really making money from copyright. What copyright was doing was blocking the circulation of my comics, which is probably why most of you haven't seen my comics. When Nina came to the realization that copyright law was oppressing the independent artist, she joined an organization called QuestionCopyright.org and is promoting the idea of committing deliberate acts of copyright infringement. She calls this philosophy intellectual disobedience. So if you know as much about the law as unfortunately I do, um, I cannot claim ignorance, mm. and I cannot claim fair use. And I just have to say, well, I got to make this thing. I got to remix this thing. I got to make this transformative work. Um, I know that I'm infringing copyright, and I don't apologize for it. Like I, it's uh, important for me as an artist to make art, and the degree of self-censorship that is required by the law is too great. Once Nina had abolished copyright in her own mind, she could do derivative work with anything under the sun. In her next movie, she's using Louis Armstrong. Now you might be wondering, what am I gonna do with this feature film when it's done? Well, first I have to finish the feature film. That's and then I'm going to release a legal version with all of the copyrighted material redacted and replaced with director's commentary. And that version is going to suck. But the inevitable undamaged copies circulating illegally on sharing sites will be obviously superior. And this, I hope, will encourage people to engage with culture beyond copyright law, because there's a beautiful world of culture out there and inside your own mind. I hope you join me in making art and not law.